has been a Northwestern program under duress this week. Their head coach, Randy Walker, took ill Monday afternoon before his weekly news conference. He was hospitalized for 48 hours, came back to the team on Wednesday afternoon, got a standing ovation from his troops as he walked into the meeting room. Things have been a little bit scattered, a little tumultuous in Evanston. Going to be an offside Both against start, Purdue. Number nine on the offense. Five yards remains Jesus third down. Christ. Check that. They initially signaled the other way. Randy Walker suffering from myocarditis, which in layman's term is a swelling of the heart. But he was very glad to get at it immediately, Bob. He didn't hesitate to see his physician. And they have great medical centers here in Northwestern. Third down and 11 for Brett Bazinet, quarterback. He's complete. First down, Noah Heron, a great receiver out of the backfield, makes the play. A pickup of 17, and let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe for an injury update. Guys, for Northwestern, their workhorse up front, Luis Castillo, is back in the game. He did aggravate that left elbow injury that he has. He's got a torn ligament, but guys, he is in excruciating pain. There's really nothing they can do for him. They put the brace back on. He's going to try it, but he has really no strength in that left arm. One of their studs up front, first down and 10. Bazin, a tough throw, incomplete. It was intended for Jonathan Fields, who's been relatively quiet and conspicuous by his silence so far this afternoon. It'll be second down and 10. Mark, Jonathan Fields, an interesting guy. Didn't play last year, jumped out the first game this year and had eight catches for 202 yards against TCU. Great speed, ran a 10, 300 meters in high school. Really rededicated himself in the weight room and never passed the conditioning test but earned Iron Cat honors in the weight room. A high distinction at Northwestern, second and 10, Bazinet takes off and is close to the first down at the 44-yard line. Brought down finally by Tory Williams and what's happening with the Buckeyes and the Lions? 14-0. Michael Robinson, uh, Robinson getting the start at quarterback this week, but not working out so far. Third down and one for Bazinet, hands it off to Heron. And he got stuck, but he did get the first down at the 42. George Hall made the hit on the play. And Mark George Hall at 250 pounds, I think is a heck of a football player. And you're going to get a chance to watch him right now. He's won every award they have for hitting at Purdue. And Brock's back interestingly wants to get him out of the game early because he's felt that he's gotten tired late in football games. Going to run it again. Terrell Jordan around the end down to the 38 and for more on the tackling of Heron let's go downstairs to Holly well guys Purdue wore down a little bit in the game last week against Michigan the defensive coordinator Brock Sachs said he could see they were tired and they had some trouble tackling add to the fact that this week now they have Noah Heron to deal with he said the keys to tackling him will be to keep their feet moving and also get more than one guy around him he also wants his players to keep their eyes open when he makes that initial contact don't close your eyes so if he gets yards after the catch or after the hit they are able to see what they're doing second down and six Bazinet going up top for Fillmore. And they're going to say it's out of bounds. Fillmore went high and twisted around, contorting his body to make the catch. And Mark, that's a good matchup. Fillmore on Antoine Rogers, Purdue's tall, talented cornerback. Again, it's just man-to-man -man coverage. You're going to see at the bottom. That's excellent coverage right there and an excellent call. He was out of bounds, but that's a potential NFL matchup. Almost looked like he had his left that foot left down. Left foot was very close, Mark, but I'm not sure he had possession of that football. Third down and six. Bazinet checking at the line. Purdue loves safety blitz. Here it comes. They try to heat him up. Bazinet escapes. And it's incomplete. Intended for Jonathan Fields. It bounced off the rug. And it's fourth down. George Hall came right through that hole, applying the pressure defensively. And in comes the punting unit. Purdue loves safety blitz. You're going to see both safeties come. The problem, Ray Edwards loses contain right there. Mark, he rushes inside, or that would have been a sack. 
and fortunate for Purdue right there that ball was underthrown. So when you blitz up the middle, your defensive end better keep contained on the outside. Well, Ryan Peterson hasn't put up great numbers. Here he goes, rolling again. A high spiral. And goes into the end zone. Not a great net on the punt. 38 yards in all, but it'll come back out to the 20. You do the math. 18. We'll be back with more after this. The Eastern with NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Orton completes it at the 25. Dorian Bryant hurts you after he makes the catch, and he gets enough for the first down at the 31-yard line. Orton threw a dart to him. Orton may have seen his Heisman hopes die in the last two weeks, but this is a very resilient young man. Two seasons ago, remember, he suffered a concussion. He lost his starting job at the time, but later reclaimed the starting job. Won the MVP of their Sun Bowl game. And Kyle Orton continues to grow as a quarterback and a leader for Purdue. First down and 10, ball at the 31. Hands it off to Brandon Jones, who had a touchdown reception last week. And a losing cause against Michigan. And let's go back to Reese in the studio. Second down and seven. Of course, talk in the SEC this week. What happened down in Florida? Ron Zook fired. Plenty of speculation regarding the potential return of Steve Spurrier. Second down and seven. Empty formation again. Bryant again with the reception. And collared at the 47-yard line by Tim McGarrigal, who leads the nation in solo tackles per game. A pickup, though, of 13 yards and another first down. And Mark Perdue has found something they like to this empty formation. Now Northwestern is just going to go ahead and play zone coverage, and they can't cover Dorian Bryant on the little option route. But Northwestern, difficult time matching up man-to-man -man coverage. Purdue will pick them apart in zone. So Purdue right now in empty sets, spreading Northwestern out. First down and 10 for Orton. And he trips up and falls at the 43-yard line. Lose about three on the play. And for more on Bryant, let's go downstairs to Holly. Well, guys, Dorian Bryant is just a freshman, and Joe Tiller says it takes a good year to break in a receiver in their complicated passing offense. They say he has come along just about as quickly as anyone learning all of the receiver positions. He says he may be their first big-time receiver at Purdue. Think about that after all these years in big-time numbers. They finally have a good receiver. Think about that. <laughs> I'll tell you who's sick, Tom O'Brien at Boston College, because he originally signed with Boston College, Mark, then went to Fork Union Military. That'll break your heart. Second down and 14. A three-man front by Northwestern. Little bubble screen to Stubblefield, who makes the catch but falls immediately at the 41-yard line. Mark, getting back to your point about Kyle Orton, he's an outstanding young man. And in my opinion, the reason his numbers have been down the last couple weeks is because teams have exposed Purdue from the standpoint of being able to come up and play bump and run. I think he's done a great job of showing his character of not being frustrated, not being selfish. And I think NFL people, in fact, I know they do, appreciate that. A tremendous student athlete as well, going to class. I attended one of his presentations a couple of weeks ago. Orton to pass. Davis on the catch, the tight end, and a nimble, sweet move. Lunging near the first down marker at the 44, but he may have come up about a yard shy. It's going to be close. They gave him a very favorable spot on the play. Mark, this time Northwestern plays zone, three-man rush, and Charles Davis again on the crossing route. And this is athletic right here by a 250-pound guy. be interesting to see where that ball is spotted right there. It's very, very close. That's an excellent job by Charles Davis down that and side. And he got the first down. And it's good to see Charles Davis's name mentioned, Mark, with something positive because he really has been playing well. Yep. And Purdue's coaches say he is an outstanding, soft-spoken young man. But let's talk about it. He has said some controversy over the last couple weeks stemming from the Erasmus James incident two weeks ago in the Wisconsin. The incident you're referring to, a legal block on Erasmus James, the defensive end for Wisconsin, which injured James and subsequently had him leave the last couple of games. Has not played since. First down and 10. 
Jones down to the 39. Tackled by Lauren Howard. Here's a look at the block that caused all the controversy. And Mark, just to put clarity on this, this is a legal cut block right here. Now, obviously, the play was blown dead. Erasmus James, a high-profile player. Some of the com comments Erasmus made added fuel to the fire. But that was a legal block. And in a minute, we're going to get a chance to show you what is not a legal shot block. There's Jones again around the left side into the boundary, tackled once again by Lauren Howard. Let's take a look at what is legal and what isn't, Bob. And, Mark, the reason we use the NFL, it's the same rule across the board. That is illegal because right here you are engaged with an offensive lineman. I'm talking about the defensive lineman, and a second man comes in while the defensive lineman is engaged and chops him. So, like it or not, it was a legal block by Erasmus James. That clearly shows you what is an illegal shot block. And there's a world of difference between those two. Third down and five. That's the tape the NFL sends out to define the rule. The pass is going to be incomplete. Ray Williams, there's flags littered down the sidelines. It may have been out of bounds and come back inbound. Mark, that's exactly what happened. He became an illegal receiver because he stepped out of bounds. He was not forced out of bounds and then came back in and was the first player to touch the ball. Illegal touching, number two on the offense, went out of bounds on his own, was the first to touch the ball inbound. That's just a loss of downs. We'll get a chance to look at it, Mark. Right here, Ray Williams is out of bounds. Obviously, no one forced him out of bounds. There's no defender within 10 yards of him and he came back inbounds. You would think got to have a little more awareness of where you are on the field. Into punt right now to Mark Fillmore standing back on his own 10-yard line is Dave Brightus. Levin with a poor punt. That has been the flavor of the day from the special teams and kicking game. Kyle Orton looking rather puzzled on the sidelines on a windy Saturday afternoon in Evanston. Back after this. Look at the lighthouse on campus and etched against the backdrop of the Whitecaps on the western shore of Lake Michigan. And uh, there's a look at the Sears Tower downtown Chicago. We're about 12 miles north. He, First suburb of Evanston. Pass complete by Bazinet to Mark Fillmore. And let's take a look at our ESPN game track. Kyle Orton with a fumble. This one not coming late in the game like it did against Wisconsin. Ben Jones banking one in off the upright. That made it a four-point game and then Orton recovers nicely, throwing a touchdown pass to Dorian Bryant to make it 10-7 with just under eight minutes to go here in the first half. Second down and one for Northwestern. High snap for Bazinet. And he wisely goes down before the play imploded. McIntosh making the sack. Mark, one problem Bazinet has had, an injured shoulder. And he's not been able to practice every day as we see the high shotgun snap right there. This past week was really the first week he was able to practice every day. And I think that's hurt the rhythm of this Northwestern offense. I hurt that shoulder initially in the Minnesota game. Just five of ten passing. Long road ahead for Northwestern, looking to win four of their last five to become bowl eligible in the bubble screen, the jailbreak screen, incomplete intended for Mark Fillmore. And it's three and out. That's not good for Randy Walker's blood pressure, those last two plays. Those were two ugly plays. And I don't think it's going to get much better based on what I've seen with the punter, although it looks like they've made a change at punter. Is that Brian Huffman back in there or not? No, it's still Getting Peterson, yep. so expect the rugby-style punt mark, and he has struggled all day. Didn't roll out on this one. and gets off a pretty decent, albeit a low-line drive kick, to Stubblefield at the 32. And Stubblefield brought down to the 36, a four-yard return on a 49-yard punt. 
Purdue going into the wind when we come back. Horton trying to move it down the field again. Miss Auburn with an opportunity to clinch the SEC West title. Brandon Jones, meanwhile, into the boundary around the left end. With a nice pickup up beyond the 40-yard line. Got about five. A second down and five, and McGargle continues to rack up those solo stops. The nation's leader in that category. Marquis is fun to watch, isn't he? Not a highly recruited guy. In fact, Northwestern was the only Big Ten school to offer McGargle a scholarship. But I tell you what, he is an aggressive football player. Now we see Purdue in the empty again. Now Northwestern, the next part of the chess game, Mark, a lot of three-man rush here. The last three empty formations by Purdue. Horton has time, incomplete. Stubblefield appeared to be wanting to make a move before he made the catch. And uh, can't be premature with that, Reese, can you? Back to you. NC State coming off a valiant effort last week against Miami. Third down and five for the Boilermakers. Orton going to be ruled complete at the 47 to Kyle Ingram, who was working on Jeff Backus. And that's going to be close to the first down at about the 47-yard line, and they give him the first down. Mark Ingraham was shut out last week against Michigan, and this is a size matchup right here. Six foot eight Ingram on five foot ten Jeff Bacchus. Wide split, and they just run the slant. Purdue loves to throw those slants, Mark. It's like posting them up. Hey, I got a mouse in the house. I got a little one. Get it to me. First and ten. Orton dials up his own number. Got about four brought down by Castillo, who's back in the ball game, and McGargle also went on the stop, and McGargle. Reminds you a lot of his linebackers coach in a lot of ways Pat Fitzgerald former great player at Northwestern One of the leading tacklers in Big Ten history mark. I think that's a great point and uh, They say he is relentless if you ask their coaches to describe one thing it's relentless and again You see Lewis Castillo 94 coming back off that elbow injury mark. He is a tough guy as well again We see the empty formation of Purdue Three man front by Northwestern Come with a blitz off the edge, and Stubblefield hangs on to it this time at the 43. Hit immediately by Marvin Ward, and that was going to be one of the interesting matchups in this ball game. Ward, a 5'11 senior, and up to the challenge so far. Under five minutes to play in the half. Well, that time, Greg Colby, Northwestern's defensive coordinator, comes with a blitz from the field, and Marvin Ward makes an excellent tackle in here in the boundary on Stubblefield. But Purdue, number one in pass efficiency in the Big Ten, number seven in the country, Mark. Northwestern, number 88 in the NCAA in pass efficiency defense. And you sense Kyle Orton starting to mount a little momentum passing the ball. Now 11 of 19. First down and 10. Brandon Jones with a nice run. Broke a couple of tackles out near the 35. Got about six. Nick Roach making the stop. Mark, this is an excellent block right here by Tyler Moore. The offensive tackle pulling around on a tackle wrap play. Really, it's a misdirection play and a really good run right there by Brandon Jones. Sets up a second down and three. Joe Tiller says the development of that offensive line has been one of the most pleasant surprises this year for Purdue. Jones again. Boy, he put his hat down and got the first down. Brandon Jones knocked Nick Roach and a couple of other Northwestern defenders back a couple of yards. Mark and Brandon Jones, I think, is an excellent football player. In fact, a lot of Purdue fans think he should be the starting tailback over Gerard Void. But last week, he caught a 63-yard touchdown pass against Michigan, against man-to-man -man coverage. He is a talented player. He has four 100-yard rushing games and also an excellent receiver. Purdue starting to threaten at the 32 of Northwestern, first and 10. A play fake by Orton for Stubblefield. Incomplete. 
Bouchard, the three, broken up by Backus. Broken up by Jack Backus. Backus, a key part of that secondary with a big assignment today. You're right, Mark, and Jeff Backus, back from an ankle injury that he had in the Ohio State game. It's just man-to-man -man coverage. The ball is underthrown, and Taylor Stubblefield really did a good job right there of becoming a defensive player, Mark, and stripping that ball out of there. But it's good to see Jeff Backus back on the field. He was Mr. Football in Ohio. 5'9", Jr., with a nice pass breakup. Second and ten. Marcus three-man rush is something Penn State had success against Purdue. Orton going to take off. He can hurt you with his legs as well as his arm. That time tucking the ball away. Out of bounds at the 26 in Greece. Think of all the great names in that series in the past. Uh, Barry Sanders, Thurman Thomas, Marcus Dupree, J.C. Watts. Hartley Dykes. Hartley Dykes. Heck of a receiver. Third down and five. Orton was looking to audible and he, instead he calls a timeout their first of the half they have two remaining to Northwestern's three an interesting point that Joe Tiller thinks that Kyle Orton has audibled about 35 percent of the time in passing situations this year he has become very adept at doing that and also throwing off the defense with dummy signals to his wide receivers we'll be back right after this. College Football Saturday presented by Crestor. Northwestern trailing Purdue 10 to 7. Purdue looking for their eighth consecutive win over Northwestern. And Bob, third down and short. Four down territory maybe because of the win? Mark, I think you bring up a good point. I mean, it's third down and five right here. Could be a quarterback draw down against this three-man front Northwestern showing and put them in position to pick it up on fourth down. On the 10th play of the drive, complete to Stubblefield. And he got the first down at the 18-yard line. McGargle made the stop. That's a little bit too easy, but again, Northwestern wanted to play man. They came out with the chain in pregame, said they were going to lock him down. They got beat early in man. Now they're forced into a zone defensive game. And, Mark, that's too easy. I mean, Kyle Orton and Taylor Stubblefield lick their chops when they see a normal five underneath zone. And Stubblefield continues to rack up the completions. Climbing the charts in the Big Ten all-time list. Jim Cheney watching from his perch atop the booth. And Brandon Jones down to the 13-yard line. With 2.47 to go in the first half. And Mark, just to go back the last two weeks, stop and think what Purdue had at stake these last two football games against Wisconsin and Michigan. Played very well in both games against two excellent football teams. The two turnovers late in the game, or you're looking at a 7-0 football team right now. Yeah, the two turnovers, a fumble by Orton and a fumble by Dorian Bryant late in the game both times. Second down and five. Backs lining up out of the eye. And Goldsberry moving a little bit early along with Grimes up front. And Mark, I go back to those two prior losses. Coming in today, psychologically, a tough game for Purdue. Offense number 66, five yards, still second down. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. All right, Mark, coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report, Trev and Mark are here with me. We'll get you up to date on Bedlam. That's just one of the games that's been largely impacted by special teams. We'll also talk about the danger this time of year going on the road. And those special teams can be great equalizers in big rivalry games like Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. And a great game in the SEC East, South Carolina and Tennessee. South Carolina up 5 to nothing right now. Special teams involved in that one too, guys. Yeah, the special teams, especially the punting today, has been deplorable. Second down and 10. Mark, we're going to see some lockdown man-to-man -man coverage attempted by Northwestern right here. Orton going to be sacked back at the 27 by Lauren Howard, number 66, who came back last week playing his first game of the season. After coming off of ankle tendon surgery, that's the 13th sack of the season for the Wildcats. Mark, that has been the blueprint the last two weeks. Tight man-to-man -man coverage, two safeties, and that allows your front to be a factor because there's nowhere early for Kyle Orton to go 
with the football. So the tight coverage allows this twist stunt right here to be a factor. And Lauren Howard, Mark, probably Northwestern's best defensive player, back from surgery off on his ankle, comes up with his first sack of the year. Yeah, last week played only about 40 plays against Wisconsin. He was cleared to play last Tuesday. This guy is all football 24-7. And for more on Howard, let's go to Holly. Well, guys, Lauren Howard had that same injury that Kurt Schilling had, where the tendon slipped out of his ankle. He did have surgery. He was supposed to be out about four or five months. He came back in six or seven weeks. He is a fanatical eater. He has great nutrition, and he says that really helped him get back. He doesn't eat any sugar. He eats beans or nuts for his snacks. And, guys, he is an all-out football fanatic. Not only his rehab, but his nutrition helped him get back on the field quickly for Northwestern. Boy, they sure needed him today. And uh, Coach Walker says he likes to tell his players to be balanced in their lives, and he admits that this guy has no balance. He's all football. This guy's from Scottsdale, Arizona. Mark came a long way to Northwestern, but his grandfather went to Northwestern. 13th play, meanwhile, with a Purdue drive on third and 19. They could get all the way to the eight-yard line for the first down. Orton with time. And Stubblefield, pardon me, Bryant couldn't hang on to it. Dorian Bryant, who earlier today caught a touchdown pass. And Joe Tiller says, offense, stay out there. Don't come back to me. You guys cause this stuff. You finish it. <laughs> Mark, of course, the win factors into all of that. You're right, and you, and you talk about copycats. Northwestern played man coverage. They saw it, Michigan and uh, Wisconsin's defense. Now they're into a three-man rush. Eight-man drop at Penn State had a lot of success against Purdue. Again, they're going to come with a three-man rush, drop eight into maximum coverage. Excellent call right here. The four of six Purdue is on fourth down this season. Orton under heat got rid of it. Nobody home. And Northwestern takes over on downs. Lauren Howard again trying to heat up Orton. Mark, and I'm telling you what, Lauren Howard's a talented guy. But when you have you have one you have three rushers and five blockers, this shouldn't happen. And right there, he did an excellent job beating Tyler Moore, I believe, the right offensive tackle. Lauren Howard, meanwhile, practices harder than anyone on that defensive unit for Northwestern. And it's great for a coach when your best player, or one of your best players, is also your best practice player. That's a great point, Mark. First down and 10 coming back the other way for the Wildcats. Right now trailing by a field goal. They have the ball in their own 27. Mark, and they do have the wind at their back. Fascinating looking for the screen and it's incomplete. Good pressure up front by Anthony Spencer. Spencer, one of the team leaders with four and a half sacks, also the strongest player on that team, pound for pound. Mark, we have to say this. Purdue's defense, seven players graduated last year, seven players made NFL teams off Purdue's defense. They are giving up less points per game than they did last year. Remarkable job by this young Purdue defense. And the coaching job by defensive coordinator Brock Spack. Bazinet on the move and sacked back at the 24-yard line by Brandon Villarreal as we speak of the defense. They demonstrate why they are number 14 in the country overall. And a timeout called with 1.18 to go in the first half. Purdue has one remaining. Northwestern with a pair. Joe Tiller's team has defeated the Wildcats seven consecutive times, looking to become bowl eligible with the win today. And coming up on the Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report, Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. We'll check in on that. Special teams play a factor today all around the bubble. And the undefeated teams on the road. Mark, how about Boise State last night? Ooh, 69 wow. to 3. The only good news for June Jones, he could get on that plane and fly back to Hawaii after that game. Didn't have to spend a night <laughs> in Boise. No heartbreakers last night. Speaking of heartbreakers, here's what it looked like the last couple of games for Purdue. First of all, against Wisconsin late in the game, Kyle Smith had a potential interception, dropped it, and then Kyle Orton, his team driving for the win, fumbled it. Scott Starks took it in for the touchdown, the go-ahead score, and then Ben Jones missing a potential game-tying field goal. Then the following week, 
against Michigan. Bryant with a great catch underneath, running for another first down, had it knocked loose by Shazer of Michigan. The Wolverines recover, killing the potential go-ahead drive, and left the mascot scratching his helmet. And the offense certainly has dropped off the last couple of games, but you have to look at the quality of the opponent. Mark, you've got that exactly right. Those are two great defensive teams, Wisconsin and Michigan. Kazanay, meanwhile, underneath, complete. Near the 39-yard line and a first down by Noah Heron. Mark, and if Northwestern comes back and wins this football game, put an asterisk by that play right there because if Northwestern would have had to punt on third and long, Purdue may have scored here before the half ended. That was a huge first down conversion. Wildcats trying to move with the wind at its back. Bazzini slides in safely at the 45-yard line. George Hall made the tackle with under a minute to go now. And Northwestern marks still with two timeouts left in the first half, so they're in excellent situation right here. Brett Bazzini idolized Drew Brees, former quarterback for the Boilermakers. That pass a little bit low intended for Heron. Let's go downstairs to Holly. At their own 45 yard line. Holly? Hey guys, after that last disastrous offensive possession for Northwestern, Troy Essex, their offensive lineman, got after his entire offense. He said, guys, at every position are not committed in this football game. You're not committed to each other. He said, make a choice right now what you're going to do. Make a choice right now. Challenge his players. And guys, they're a little bit better, more efficient on this play. It looks like they've made that choice. All right, Holly, on third down and four. They came up flat last week. Can't do it two weeks in a row, or so you would think. That pass batted down by Paul Long blitzing up front. It'll be fourth down now for the Wildcats. And Bazinet was one of the first players to put it on himself last week after the Wisconsin defeat and the disappointment saying, hey, I, I think it was my fault. I didn't make the plays. Mark, right here, Brock Speck's going to bring Paul Long off the corner right here on a little nickel blitz. He bats the ball up in the air, and let's call it the way it is. Northwestern's not playing very well other than the first series of this game after Kyle Orton turned the ball over. Yeah, they got the benefit of a short field as well. Both teams with one timeout remaining. Randy Walker in his sixth year, a lot ahead for that team. They've got to win four of their next five games because they play a 12-game schedule ball, Bob, to become bowl eligible. You need you can't go six and six exactly mark they go out to Hawaii which gives them the 12th game of the year and they need to be a seven and five football team last year they made it to the Motor City Bowl played against Bowling Green and don't forget folks college football. happy Halloween everybody Thank you very much. <laughs> Larry Bird in the house and I'm not sure what that guy behind Elvis is. Randy Walker may be a little unsure of who is masquerading as his football team right now, not playing up to speed. Trailing by a field goal. Good pressure by Pollard. It's double field back at his own seven. Fell down over the 10 yard line. With 33 seconds to go in the first half, a good 45 yard punt with the wind at his back by Ryan Peterson. And Ryan Peterson's fortunate that Pollard, who has blocked two kicks on back-to-back -back weeks, mark number 35, one right there. Ooh. Wow. Pollard blocked a field goal against Michigan last week, blocked an extra point against Wisconsin, almost had his third kick block in three consecutive games. Northwestern uh, had one blocked last week against the Badgers. Mark, this game has gone like we thought it would go. Kind of an ugly game. Two teams fighting it out, but a lot at stake. When they look back on this game in late November, when they're adding up those wins for a bowl game, they're going to look back to this game in late October. Kyle Orton's team's going to go into the locker room with a 10-7 lead. Orton finishing 12 of 23 in the first half with 110 yards passing with one touchdown. Nice to see him bounce back after fumbling early in the game, which led to that Northwestern touchdown. Purdue looking for their sixth win of the season. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Coach, what was the most disruptive factor in that first half for your offense? The wind. Uh, I think dealing with the wind and getting used to throwing the ball as much as we want to throw it. Throw it.
to that in the second half. Actually, I think what we learned is we'd rather throw into it than with it. But, no, you just have to settle down and continue to work the underneath routes. All right, thanks, Coach. All right, the score at halftime, 10-3 to 3 for Joe Tiller's Purdue Boilermakers. 10-7, to 7, pardon me. Now let's join Reese, Trev, and Mark. And guys, I'm not going to say it's windy here in Evanston, but I think I just saw Dorothy and Toto blow by. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Reese. Back here in Evanston, Illinois. Uh, not a very pretty offensively anyway first half as Purdue leads by a field goal. And moments ago, Holly Rowe caught up with Coach Walker. Coach, first and foremost, how did you feel physically in the first oh, half? I'm fine. I really am. How did you feel for your team in the first half, unable to get the momentum there at the end? Well, you know, it's just one of those things. This game's going to be a crazy game just based on the elements. And I told our kids, that, hey, there's going to be an ebb and flow in this game. And uh, you just got to hang in there and play 60 minutes. Something good's going to happen in the end. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. All right, Bob. Uh, windy, blustery day. Winds up to about 30 miles per hour here in Evanston, Illinois, on the banks of Lake Michigan. The top two offensive teams, passing offenses in the Big Ten, but not many, many points on the board. You think the wind has something to do with it? I know it does, Mark. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, this is a survival game right now for these two teams. I mean, the stats are basically even as we go into this second half. This is a critical game for both teams. One of them is going to have to grind it out. Nothing's going to come easy. Nothing's going to be pretty today. And I'm not sure people at home realize just how significant this wind is. It's as much a factor as any game I've coached in. Strong winds, no doubt. Out to the 32-yard line, it's Gerard Boyd as we take a look at the first half statistics. Kyle Orton was 12 of 23, 109 yards passing. Total offense dead even. The one turnover in the ball game led to a Northwestern score, that being a Orton fumble in the first quarter. First down and 10 for Iowa, meanwhile, at their own 31-yard line. And Bobby Awichiku was injured earlier in the game, the starting linebacker for Purdue, back on crutches now. Mark, keep in mind, Purdue going with the wind here in the third quarter. Obviously, Northwestern will have that wind in the fourth quarter. So for Purdue's offense, although Joe Tiller said at the end of the half, it's maybe easy for Kyle Orton to throw into the wind rather than with the wind, which was an interesting comment. Sure was. Void got about two on the play, especially when you consider the fact that Stubblefield may have had a touchdown reception if one of those Orton passes didn't get hung up in the wind in the second quarter. Mack has made the stop on the play. It'll be second down, about eight to go. Stubblefield, meanwhile, has been relatively quiet. Four catches, 29 yards, but a couple of drops as well. Second down and six. Again, Mark, we see the three-man rush that Northwestern probably had their most success with against the empty package. Pass complete to Davis, the tight end, out at the 42-yard line, got the first down. Charles Davis made a wonderful play in the second quarter, lunging for a first down. Scholar athlete. And Mark, so much you hear every week when you watch football games about the first series of the second half, but I think it's extremely critical today because it's kind of a flat, not kind of, it is a flat atmosphere around here, period. And I think this first possession of the second half will go a long way to determining the outcome of this football game. Well, teams having to sap all their motivational fuel. Got a flag down on the near side of the field, a little motion up front. Ball start, number 89 on the offense, five yards, remain first down. It's going to be against Kyle Ingram, the wideout for Purdue. Started. I feel your pain, Joe. <laughs> Those kind are hard to explain. Kyle Ingram is 25 yards away from the football. They are running the football opposite to where he's lined up. And he jumps the snap count. Puts up a first down and 15. Purdue with a win today would become bowl eligible with their sixth win of the season against two defeats. Orton behind Stubblefield, actually Bryant. And it'll be second down and 15. Mark, and it's so critical for Purdue to catch these short passes because they don't throw the football down the field. So run after the catch on those short passes is a big part of Purdue's offense. And right now, as they have been the last couple of weeks, they're out of sync on these little underneath throws. You heard Holly Rowe report earlier today that Joe Tiller says they're going to shorten up their routes because of the wind. 
it being such a huge factor. Second down and 15. Orton again fires complete to Davis. And Davis brought down at the 49, about three yards short of the first down by John Pickens, a pickup of 12 on the play. Davis with his third reception of the game. Third down and three. We've seen Northwestern Bob go at that three-man three front, that three-man rush. What do you think about the man pressure that we kind of expected to see? Well, I think you got to stay balanced, and uh, I think Northwestern's done a good job, Greg Colby, of mixing things up. I mean, you can't do a steady diet of the same things over and over, but this three-man rush has been their most effective overall defense against Purdue's spread offense. On third down and three, Orton can't pull the trigger, finally does, and throws it out of bounds. Good coverage in the secondary. Nobody seemed to get open. Lewis Castillo with the pressure. It'll be fourth down. Good pressure up front by Castillo. Mark, at some point on third down and three against a three-man front eight drop, you have to be able to run the football. Look at these running lanes in here, these bubbles. At some point, whether it's quarterback draw, run the football on third down and three. Instead, Levine into punt from his own 40-yard line, his third of the day. And Fillmore watches it bounce. It'll be down at about the 10-yard line. Certainly responded since. I'll tell you one thing he is, is resilient. And that's the thing you appreciate about the Kyle Ortons of the world, Mark. I mean, and the NFL appreciates. It's not always going to be easy now. Not easy for Bazinet today as he hands it off to Noah Heron. Heron turns it north-south and got a first down at the 28-yard line. Got a good block up front by Matt Ulrich. Noah Heron looking for his fourth consecutive 100-yard game rushing. Picked up 17 on that carry. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. Mark, I think Northwestern can be effective in this second half, running the football and then play action off the run. I think Bazinet does an excellent job throwing on the run. It can't be one dimensional and just run it, but run and play action. He throws it, and what a play. Number 13 and number 12, Tory Williams was there. Shed the blocker and made a hit. Jonathan Fields took the lick. Mark, if you're going to throw those bubble screens, the guy catching it is not as important as the guy blocking for the guy catching. And that time you're going to see out here, Herbert, I believe, just throws a no-hitter. I mean, if you're going to run bubble screens, then you better bow up and block out there. You're going to get that receiver killed. Almost did on that one. Fast complete this time. Out of 42 to Ashton Akins and a first down for Northwestern. Mark, and there's my point of Brett Bazinet, but again, a holding penalty is going to bring this back, but Brett Bazinet of throwing on the run. That's the second time today we've seen a third down conversion called back for Northwestern because of a penalty. Holding number 60 on the offense, 10 yards from the previous spot, still second down. Bazinet got off to a great start this season, passed for 513 yards in a double overtime loss the first game of the year against TCU. Take a look at this holding play. Mark, we're going to see big 60 right there. You're not on defense in Duque. Cannot grab Brent Grover's knee like that and take him to the ground. He was sneaky about it. And give him credit. <laughs> that camera does not lie, though. That was a great replay right there. Second down and 20. Try to run the screen again and almost picked off. Intended for Mark Fillmore. It'll be third and long, 20 to go. Torrey Williams again there to break the play up. And I'll tell you what, Purdue brought these jailbreaking bubble screens to the Big Ten, Mark, and Grover, the defensive lineman. I want to watch right here. You're going to see Grover coming out of here, right there. He's seen that in practice, and I mean, he was going to go after that one. Bazine, meanwhile, has missed his last five passing attempts. Third down and 20. Bazine going to run it and is brought down at the 23 by Cliff Avril and Anthony Spencer. 
Brock's backs defense has been stellar today, giving up just seven points. And field position, Mark, the penalties on this drive. Once again, Northwestern kicking into the wind. It's a field position game, particularly when the wind is such a factor in the football game. Dan Peterson now with his seventh punt of the day. Keep an eye on Pollard, number 31 from Purdue, Mark. As we mentioned, he almost blocked one today. Peterson end over end and an egregious effort into the win. Out of bounds at the 35 yard line. A 12 yard punt. No relief in sight for the Northwestern Wildcats and their special teams do in part anyway to the win. Three days of 19. Pardon me, three, day three of 19 days of football. A lot of football, straight up on ESPN. And beat them with your brains had you it had me off balance right there, didn't it? Confused for a little bit. A little over 11 minutes to go, working with a shorter field. Orton with a play fake. Incomplete. Threw it in Stubblefield's direction, and it has been a terrible day for special teams. For more, let's go to Holly. Well, guys, Northwestern decided to make a change at the punter and kicker positions this week. Randy Walker said before the season he had talked to guys in the NFL about having Brian Huffman do both, and they said, don't do it. The motions are too different. He can't be effective. They went ahead and did it, having Brian do both. But this week, Randy Walker told Brian Huffman, I don't want you to do any swinging motion with your leg as in punt. That's why Peterson's out there today. But, guys, I think the biggest factor, though, for both punters is the win, not necessarily just the change in position. Yeah, no doubt, Holly. Second down and 10 for Orton. Incomplete intended for Void. And it'll be third down and 10. With the wind kicking up the way it has today, you've got to do something with the ball when you have the wind at your back. Exactly, Mark. And if you're Northwestern, just survive the third quarter so you have the wind in the fourth quarter. But again, back to Joe Tiller's point on that prior throw that Kyle Orton made to Taylor Stubblefield. I mean, that ball really came out of there erratic. It may be just as much trouble throwing with the wind. Third down and 10. The tight end Charles Davis, Mark, has become a factor here in the second half in the passing game for Purdue. Particularly against this three-man rush, heavy zone coverage. Getting some good pressure on Orton. Pass is broken up nicely by Marvin Ward. Well, the chain and the lock that they brought onto the field to start the game worked on that play. Whatever inspiration they used, it was good. It's fourth down and 10 now for Purdue. Mark, if you're going to allow teams to rush three and drop eight, there's two things. One, you got to be able to run the football. Second, you got to stay out of passing downs. And that was a great play by Marvin Ward over on the sidelines. Ben Jones does have a strong leg, but Joe Tiller choosing instead to punt. Mark, and you have to be impressed with Northwestern's defense after that short punt. Fielded at the nine. Mark Fillmore returns it out near the 25-yard line. After 11 punt. Fasnay going to try and get the offense going when we come back. The interesting hues that come along with the fall. Let's scroll through Krampus here in Evanston, Illinois. First down and 10 for the Wildcats. On their own 20, it's Jordan on the sweep. Never got those shoulders squared and turned it upfield. Let's go back to Reese in the studio. Interesting to see Schaefer getting some action again. Second down and 12. It's Heron who gets the call this time, and he's brought down at the 22-yard line. Oh, Heron has had three consecutive 100-yard rushing games, averaging almost 140 during that span. And today's Burger King having it their way award goes to Noah Heron. Just led the way for their offense and taking care of opposing defenses with a very healthy average the last few games. Tough kid, too. Suffered a mild concussion against Arizona State a few weeks back, but came back the next game with 85 yards rushing in a win against Kansas here at home. On the option. 
Heron again out to the 37. Kyle Smith chopped him down, but not before Heron got the first. Mark, that was a great call right there by Mike Dunbar because they caught Purdue in substitution defense with extra defensive backs and Purdue is in man to man and all these DBs get run off and they come with the option and there's nobody on the pitch when you're in man to man coverage see the DBs run with the receivers the free safety has the pitch but he can't get there in time Kyle Smith so an excellent call right there by Mike Dunbar first down and 10 it's Heron again out to the 40 yard line Anthony Spencer made the stop that time and let's go back to Reese again tell you about Clemson Mark they have all those different uniforms they're like four or five different teams I mean they can be real good real bad somewhere in the middle Try they to change they change personalities as much as they do those colors man confuse defenses that way and that's the hope maybe who knows Heron that time stopped up by Spencer Anthony Spencer part of a great defense for Brock Spack the coordinator Spencer a 6'3 sophomore but this is a team that lost a lot of very valuable members defensively last year a bunch of them matriculating to the NFL nine players in all seven of them on defense you talk about guys like Stuart Schweiger Nico Kudaviti Sean Phillips a lot of great players not there this year but the defense continues doing well that time going to be a penalty back at the 37 yard line Mike uh, Mark they're going to call holding on in Duke way number 60 on Brent Grover and it's going to be interesting to see on the replay I mean it looked like he did a great job holding number 60 on the offense 10 yards from the previous spot repeat third down Mark, they're going to take him out of the game because it's his second holding penalty. But he's right here, and I want you to watch this. It's the quarterback draw. Yep, got that hand, no question. Good call. He had that left hand on that shoulder pad, Mark. Grover pleading his case successfully. That was a huge penalty. Bazine had his arm tipped as he came forward with his throwing motion by Brent Grover who was there once again mark critical holding calls against Northwestern today once again it's a field position game we're gonna look at Ray Edwards at the bottom rushing on strafe but I go back if you're not an explosive high scoring offense particularly in a field position game like today those penalties by Northwestern in key situations mark Punting into the wind is Ryan Peterson. Again, keep your eye on number 31, Pollard. His eighth punt of the day rolls out a little bit on this one. And as I said earlier, the punting game, especially for the Wildcats, has been unconscionable today. Mark, at some point you have to make a change, though, don't you? I know the wind is blowing, but if you have Brian Huffman, who has kicked in your first six games, punted in your first six games, I mean, Come on now, this experiment's not working. The last one went 12, Bob. This one went 10. Horton hoping to take advantage of the poor punt after this. Nineteenth ranked Purdue just a couple of weeks ago, ranked number five of the country, then a couple of devastating losses to Wisconsin and Michigan, respectively. Falling to five and two overall, two and two in conference play, but Kyle Orton right now trying to help reclaim their season. This is Boyd. And a great play by Bryce, who knife lacerated through the offensive line to make the stop. 7.20 to play in the third quarter. Mark Dominic Price, he is really a linebacker playing safety. He's an excellent football player. You're going to see him come down underneath right here, beats the block of Kyle Ingram, and submarines void the running back. Well, he was the one that carried that chain onto the field to begin the game to symbolize the potential lockdown. That time he might have had a hammer with him, a sledgehammer. It was a great hit. Second down and 10. Batted down at the line of scrimmage that time by Colby Clark. And let's go to Reese. Touchdowns are up 21-7 on Penn State. Third down and 10 for the Boilermakers. Marcus third and long allows Northwestern to get back into this three-man rush. Now nine-man drop with the nose dropping out of there. Orton with tons of time has a man open. And Bryant hangs on to it for the first down at the 28-yard line. Dorian Bryant, the speedy freshman from New Jersey, made a play. 
Mark, I'm a little bit surprised at this call by Greg Colby. They've been getting there with a three-man rush, but I want you to watch this time. They spy the nose guard out and only go with two rushers. This allows Kyle Lorton extra time. Right there, you see Castillo spying out, looking for the crossing route. Now he just steps up in that window right there, and it's hard to hold any coverage that long. So a little surprised that he just didn't stay with his normal three-man rush because they've had some pressure with that. Bryant now with four catches for a total of 51 yards and a key conversion. Mark, you feel like a reverse or something for Purdue at some point. You know, try to break this thing and get a big play. They've got those gimmicks in their playbook, Bob. That time they handed off to Boyd, brought down by McGargo. Joe Tiller has never lost to Northwestern in his seven prior appointments with the Wildcats. And you've got to give a lot of credit to Tiller for the job that he's done at Purdue and adjusting initially to getting the job. He realized that administrators don't give you much time to figure things out. You have to win and you have to entertain while you do it. And he's done both. Mark, unbelievable job. Seven straight bowl games. This year will be his eighth. Said he was a little surprised just how negative it was after the loss to Wisconsin. You know, and the expectations have skyrocketed in West Lafayette. He's raised the bar there. Here's Orton, part of the reason why, but he's picked off by Ward. Marvin Ward with Northwestern's fourth interception, only their fourth of the season, but coming at a pivotal time. Mark, you have to wonder, was the wind the 12th man on that play? Because he had the receiver, I believe it was Stubblefield, open and threw that football behind him. Marvin Ward's second interception this year. Again, Mark Gordon steps up, and right here, double field is open, and the ball was underthrown. Wow. After the first four games of the year, Kyle Lorton had not thrown a single interception. In fact, the offense didn't turn it over in the first four games. And Mark, even for great players, confidence is a fragile, fragile thing, isn't it? Sure is. And Heron coming back the other way. Brandon Kirsch, meanwhile, the backup to Orton, starting to throw on the sidelines. And this would be for one reason, Mark. We've watched Brandon Kirsch play. He is an excellent runner with predetermined quarterback runs. And if Northwestern's playing a lot of eight-man drop, all of a sudden they force you to use that quarterback as a runner. But I doubt that they'll give number 18 the hook right now. They have a lot invested in him, and he has been the guy they've ridden all year. Jordan. Getting to the corner a little bit. Stopped up at about two yards short of the first down. And let's go back. Boy, they look fast. I tell you, Oklahoma they look fast, Bob. is a balanced football team. Offense, defense, and particularly balanced on offense with the ability to run and throw. And speaking of running, Heron gets the first down, powering his way through the defensive front to the 28-yard line. Stopped by Pollard. Let's go down to Holly. Guys, watching Brandon Kirsch, Purdue's backup quarterback, warm up, he had a certain sense of urgency about him, not like a casual warm up period. So I caught his attention and just asked him, Did they tell you you're going in? He gave me the nod. Guys, keep in mind, they have a lot of option package in their offense when Kirsch comes in at quarterback. They may be looking to combat this wind with a little quick footwork by their backup quarterback. Yeah, Kirsch got a couple of starts when Orton suffered a concussion a couple of years ago before Orton finally reclaimed that starting job. So he does have a little bit of experience. Bazany intended for Fillmore, incomplete near midfield. Mark, keep in mind, Kyle Orton does have a hip pointer. I noticed him in the Michigan game. They had a bike down there on the sidelines, but I think his pride's hurt a little bit more than his hip right now, if I have to guess. Kyle Orton with a lot on his mind. Actually had a talk with his coach a couple of times this year about some of the demands being placed on his time by various publications, television stations, magazines wanting to do interviews with him during his Heisman campaign. Second down and 10. Right now it's about just winning for Purdue. The carry by Heron got a yard. Villarreal making the stop with three and a half minutes to go in the third. Neither team doing well offensively today. Mark, I think a great point right here. Northwestern, three minutes and 20 seconds left in the third quarter, able to hold Purdue scoreless with the wind. So I think it's a huge factor if Northwestern can hang on here. Uh, they're in a third and long situation. Produce substitutes on defense. Expect man-to-man -man coverage again. The last time they ran the option against this look. 
Third down and eight. Motion up front. Fans are booing, but Ray Edwards really didn't hit Basney that hard. He tried to pull up when he heard the whistle. Mark, you're exactly right. But they are going to get five yards here to make it about third down and Offside. three. Defense number 49 and number 10. Five yards. Third down. There's a reason why he got in there a little early, Bob. <laughs> well, he definitely jumped early, and Anthony Spencer on the other side did as well. And that's a good no call right there. Third down and three. sure what that has <laughs> but that's all about <laughs> third down and three on the option it's going to be an incomplete pass mark that was a forward pitch if you noticed and i think that's an excellent call incomplete pass he did pitch that football forward as a result Northwestern looking at fourth down. Bazinet, Bob, has missed his last eight consecutive passes. Albeit in the third quarter, he was throwing it into the wind. Mark, we may get a chance to see this. I want you to watch the angle of that ball. If we let it roll, is it... That's forward, isn't it? Because his feet were behind that line, and that ball was pitched in front of that line. Well, let's see who they send in to punt. Hunting game has been atrocious for Northwestern today after making the switch from Brian Huffman. Mark, that is reviewable, but uh, I don't think that's what this hold up is. Do you? No. I didn't see anyone say that it was reviewable, but I, I guess he's in front of that line. I thought it was a forward pass that was. I it looked to me to be a forward pass and incomplete. Here's the real story, and then yeah. who comes in at quarterback for Purdue? Fourth down and three. The fans derisively cheer for Peterson's punt. Got a pretty good bounce. It's going to be down at about the 26-yard line. Once in a while, even the squirrel catches a nut. I think Peterson knew he was testing <laughs> Randy Walker's patience and blood pressure. He had one more shot. 38 yards, Bob, into the wind as Brandon Kirsch gets set to come out and take the reins of the offense. Kirsch, a very good athlete and a good running quarterback. Uh, Six foot three inch, 203 pound sophomore from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. What you have to wonder what's going through that young man's mind. He's been tested before earlier in his career. Kirsch moved in front of him as the starter, but now going from Heisman Trophy candidate two weeks ago, Mark, to being replaced now, this is a whole different dynamic for Kyle Lorton. So it'll be as fine a young man as he is, he's being tested big time right now. First down and 10. Right now it's up to Kirsch in it on the quarterback spot. Handed off to Boyd on first and ten. He got about three out to the 32. Kirsch appeared in three games as a sub before re-injuring his right throwing shoulder, initially sustained as a high school baseball player last season. Mark, the strength of Northwestern's defense is rush defense. We mentioned they came into this game 86th in the country out of 117 teams in pass efficiency defense. So in some ways, Brandon Kirshen running the football plays into their hands. Here he is running the ball. This is what he's in to do. And he got a nice block and a first down out beyond the 40 to the 41. And let's go to Reese in the studio. Didn't they have two last week against Penn State? Yeah. Special team Saturday, that's what we should call it. First and ten. Brandon Kirsch on his fourth play in a quarterback, hands it off to Boyd. And Boyd is stopped up at the line of scrimmage by Tim McGargle. McGargle leads the nation in solo stops per game. And Mark, no question right here that Joe Tiller wanted to send a message to his football team. Brandon Kirsch is in here. They are no longer a spread offense. They're lining up and running that football right now. And I think mentally he's just sending a message to his team. And you have to be curious how that message is going over right there for this young man. Do you risk losing a guy like Kyle Orton? You're not going to lose. quarterback? You won't lose him, Mark. You will not lose him. I mean, he's a competitive guy. Second down and nine on the bootleg, wide open. The tight end, Davis, has a first down at the 46-yard line. Davis 
with his fifth catch of the day. Mark, that's a good call set up by the last call where Kirsch naked bootlegged out of there. This time he fakes the zone and Charles Davis blocks for a second and then comes out to the flat. Into Northwestern territory at the 46 yard line with 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. Purdue with the wind at its back here for 37 more seconds. Boyd on the handoff. Moving the pile out near the 41 yard line with 23 seconds to go in the third quarter. I don't think Randy Walker minds right now that Purdue with the wind at their back has number 18 on the sidelines and are lining up running that football. So I think Northwestern is in a great situation, Mark, if they can execute offensively and kick a field goal or two to win this football game. Kyle Orton, the former Heisman candidate, forced to watch from the sidelines despondently. That's the end of the third quarter. Randy Walker's been through a lot of trying circumstances this week. His team poised and ready to make a move when we come back for the fourth. The Whitecaps breaking on Lake Michigan. We're in Evanston, Illinois, the first suburb north of Chicago. 54 degrees, and uh, boy, if it weren't for the wind, it'd be a nice day. You told me you almost moved to Chicago at one time, didn't you? Close, close. I'm trying to hang with Mike. Second down and five. Boyd stopped up at the line of scrimmage. Let's go back to Reese. Remember Barry Sanders going to scout Oklahoma State before one of their games. He was looking at the running back situation. Saw Thurman Thomas said, hey, he's good, but the guy behind him is even better. Exactly. He's talking about Barry Sanders. Mark, do you like quarterback draw right here? Sense a run, perhaps, on third down and four. That's what they call. Oh, what a move by Kirsch. Stopped on a dime and didn't leave Northwestern any change and got the first down. Let's go back to Reese. I formation forget about the spread shotgun with the back going sideways line that young Eric Dickerson looking guy up in the backfield in the I formation first down and 10 Boyd trying to do his best Eric Dickerson out to the 27 yard line Mark you have to like the third down quarterback draw call I mean I think everybody in the stadium presumed it was coming but Brandon Kirsch did an excellent job of picking up five yards and now momentum you sense is is on Purdue's side a little bit Kyle Orton getting an opportunity to watch from the sidelines and you have to hope that he's taking it as an opportunity quote unquote on second down and three two tight end formation Bennett in motion they hand it off to Boyd Running between the tackles down to the 18, Price made the stop. Let's take a look at our ESPN game track. Kyle Orton has struggled right from the very beginning of the game when he fumbled a couple of wayward passes, incomplete, and then an interception to Ward. And then Kirsch came in and ran the ball effectively, especially a couple of plays ago, getting a key first down conversion. Orton watching from the sidelines. First down and 10, the 10th play of the Purdue drive. Davis in motion. Boyd on the run. Tackled right at the line of scrimmage, brought down by Cofield. And McGargle, and for more on Purdue, let's go down to Holly. Well, guys, keep in mind, last week against Michigan, Kyle Orton suffered a hip pointer. He said he spent some rehab time in the pool, doing some pool work this week. So you've got to think that they want Brandon Kirsch in there right now because Kyle Orton, although he is an improved runner this season, is not 100% health-wise with that hip pointer. I think his feelings are hurting worse than that hip right now, though, just by the look on his face over there. A little bit introspective. I only guess what he's thinking is Kirsch has the range of the offense and we have flags down on the field. Orton, you know, it's easy to forget, Bob, that these guys are not only athletes, spend a lot of their time watching film and practicing and lifting weights, but these young men are also students and then had an opportunity to witness that with Kyle Orton a couple of weeks ago, attending one of his classes with him, his class on the women's movement and how it gained ground in the United States after initiating itself in 
Europe. He did a nice presentation. I asked him if he got his grade yet. He said no. Mark, but it's interesting between academics, they wait to grade you. It's immediate return or risk. It's well, a win or loss. It's definitive on the football field. On second and long. Mark, I'll say back. this. There's not many Purdue fans out there in this stadium or out there watching on television that are really worried about what kind of grade that young man got in that class. I mean, that's the bottom line. When they step out on this field, all that stuff goes out the window, and all it comes down to is performance in the end. And that's why I have so much credit for these players, because you are exactly right. There's a bunch of things going through that young man's mind right now. He's not going to plead to the fans and say, hey, I had a midterm last night. That won't wash with them on third down and 11. I think Greg Cope is going to come after Kirsch right here. Kirsch takes off with it. Out of bounds at about the 12-yard line. About four yards short of the first down. Garagol again making the stop. Mark a 10-7 football game. Joe Tiller right now elects to go with Ben Jones, the field goal kicker. Keep in mind, Ben Jones missed a 42-yarder at the end of the Wisconsin game. And had one blocked he had last one week. blocked against Michigan, and he banked one off the right upright earlier in this game. So this is no gimme right here. And he's kicking it into the wind from 29 yards out. Ben Jones, the former transfer from Butler. Preseason All-American selection. Made one from 23, this one from 29. And he missed it to the right. Mark, that wasn't even close. The fragile confidence of place kickers and the appropriate response from the head coach. Quarterbacks and kickers, Mark, when they wake up Saturday morning and they see that weather forecast and it's 35, 40, 40 mile an hour winds, kickers and quarterbacks want to go and put their head back under those covers. Can't think about it too long, though. 10 7 when we come back. A disappointed and despondent looking place kicker, Ben Jones, after that 29 yard miss on the field goal and it's homecoming week here at Ryan Field. Home crew trailing 10 to 7. Looking for their fourth consecutive win at home. First down and 10 for Northwestern. Handed off to Noah Heron. And Heron is marked out of the 23 yard line by Brent Grover. Heron, meanwhile, during the course of this game, has gone over 2,000 yards rushing for his career. Had an interesting conversation with him last week up in Madison, Wisconsin. Said, you know, there's a certain perception about Northwestern players being. You know, nerds, so to speak, for lack of a better term. He says, yeah, people do look at us that way, but we got a little something for him this week and in following weeks. Ray's rushed for 80 yards, Bazinet a pass, incomplete at the 40-yard line. Uh, let's go back to Reese in the studio. Our Tennessee is just one of those teams that might be just good enough, huh? Yeah. Kind of a Wisconsin kind of a team in that they have to work for everything they get. Bazine complete the fields at the 26, but short of the first down. Brought down immediately on the play by Cliff of Rill. Mark, and how about this Purdue defense? I mean, they continue just to go out there and play week after week, down after down. Rocks back, former player, coaching up his defensive unit after those seven players of his last year have moved on to the NFL. Edwards staunch up front along with Spencer on the end. Fourth down and three. Keep an eye on Pollard, who has come after and almost gotten a couple punts today. Low snap. And a great punt. That bounces at the 26-yard line. Peterson with the wind at his back this time. Been an up-and-down day for him. That one went 45 yards. Purdue with another chance when we come back to Ryan Field. Maneuver their way through some very choppy waters. Purdue leading 10 to 7. College football Saturday presented by Crestor Kyle Orton. Starting quarterback on the bench, Brandon Kirsch with the reins of the offense. First and 10 for the Boilermakers on the bootleg. Kirsch with a nice move on Cofield. Picked up about two yards after all that running. Pickens made the stop. And Kirsch getting in the face of the defender. A feisty 
Kerhurst talking to John Pickens, the linebacker. Kind of like that, don't you, Mark? Yeah. I don't see anything to take. I think it was. Oh, there it little, is. Got a little face mask right there. Right? Curse, though, gave it right back. You know what I like about that play? There was no call. Exactly. I think that's a great No call. call. You're right. Second down and eight. No harm. Mark, this is Purdue on offense, right? Running two tight ends, power football, Gerard Boyd. Reese, what is. I got, I got maybe in. I got Peterson. Say Adrian Peterson. <laughs> I'll go out on a limb with that. Reese going to let us hanging out on a limb, isn't he? Yeah. He's going he's to bring us back after this play and tell us, I'll bet you. Third down and seven. Purdue 6 of 14 in third down situations today. Kirsch, a twisting catch by Bryant, and he got the first down to the 40 yard line. Dorian Bryant contorting his body to make a clutch grab. Mark, we used to talk about Kyle Orton and Taylor Stubblefield. Now we're talking about Brandon Kirsch and Dorian Bryant. That's a great catch right there. And then he controlled the football before he went down. Key third down conversion right there. Joe Tiller had a talk with that young freshman after his fumble against Michigan and said, at least, son, you put yourself and our team in a position to win the football game. There's going to be other opportunities to make good. And he's done that today. This is Boyd's turn out near the 45. And let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Well, guys, I think the hardest thing for Dorian Bryant after last week's fumble is they made him immediately go to the press conference. Not only is this young man a freshman, he fumbles the ball with a chance to give his team an opportunity to win against Michigan last week with two minutes left. But then he has to go and face the media and answer about that fumble. Joe Tiller said that's a quick way for guys to grow up. But they liked how Dorian Bryant handled it. Guys, he's growing into a very mature player for this Purdue offense. On second down and four, thanks, Holly. Yeah. Backs lining up out of the eye. Joe Tiller and Jim Chaney, the offensive coordinator, changing their tack and changing their strategy a little bit. Sometimes it ain't checkers, it's chess. Right, That's Martin. what they're playing now. And we said coming in, we said at halftime, it's going to be a grinder game. Jim Chaney knows right now the way Purdue's defense is playing, the way they're struggling throwing the football consistently on offense, it's about digging down and grinding it out against a really talented front seven for Northwestern. So this is old time yeah. ball right here. Forget about that spread offense, Mark. No basketball on grass here. Third down and two to go. Oh, Kirsch wide open. Oh, and what a tackle in the open field by Jeff Backus. And he says, no, not on my clock. And it's going to be close, Mark. That was a great call by Jim Chaney, in my opinion, and a great play by Jeff Backus in the open field. Backus. Tell you what, first of all, a great call right here. Second of all, wow. Excellent job. If you notice, Brandon Kirsch, if we go back and look at it again, look how he gets the ball in his left hand and keeps Backus from stripping that. If you think back to Cal Orton's run right. against Wisconsin, he kept that football on the inside arm, and the ball was stripped. But it is fourth down right now, Mark. What do you do if you're Joe Tiller? I know what I'm, I'm doing gonna if ask I'm you. Joe Tiller. <laughs> you go with it. Line I, it up, two tight ends. You go with it. I punt that ball right here, Mark. The way your defense is playing, make Northwestern drive the length of the field. They haven't driven the football all day on you. A field goal for Northwestern, though, ties it with the wind at their back. And you're kind of a rambling, gambling guy. I know you would have gone for it right <laughs> In a here. heartbeat. Of course, you'd be getting on that plane and flying home after the game, and you wouldn't have any press conference to deal with I'm either. I'm 1-0 oh every week. Aaron Levin into punt for Purdue, standing on his own 36, his fifth punt of the afternoon. Gets off a low line drive into the wind, and it's going to take a nice Purdue bounce. You couldn't have done it better, any better, with a nine iron or a How would you have punted the ball, or would you still I have said it? all along, he's got to punt the ball <laughs> and make the offense move it down the field. 45 yards later, Northwestern with possession when we return.
Then punt returns. And he is like a shot out of a cannon. Got a different gear. First down and 10 for Northwestern. 94 yards away. They haven't scored since the opening minutes of the ball game. Mark, you, how about 10 punts? And that's been a story in itself. But you got to think that pretty soon they're playing for a bowl game right now, right. even though it's October 30th, correct? Right. They have to that's win it. four of their last five games. At some point, they need to take his football and kick a field goal or score a touchdown, I think, if they're going to go to a bowl game this year. And if you're just joining us, Randy Walker with some personal challenges in this ball game. He was diagnosed earlier this week with myocarditis. That is a swelling of the heart. He was presently on medication. He had to talk his doctors into letting him coach this afternoon's game. First down and 10. The pass incomplete at the 12 yard line intended for Mark Fillmore. On the coverage. Brett Bazinet, meanwhile, uh, came in completing 57% of his passes, subpar day for him. I think, Mark, you have to keep in mind, this is an offense that had 637 yards on TCU, 483 on ASU, 444 on Ohio State. So they are capable of moving the football. They come into this game 20th in the country in pass offense, 26th in total offense. So, man, they are struggling. Bazinet. Incomplete to Heron out of the backfield at the eight yard line and he's struggling all right. Bazinet threw that one low and it's interesting. He's got a very harsh critic in his brother whose name is Kyle who plays quarterback at Orange Coast Community College. The two of them speak regularly uh, five, six times a week critiquing themselves uh, on the telephone. Kyle watches the tape of the games and calls his brother up, his older brother. Mark, at some point, Fillmore, number nine, the talented wide receiver, has to step up and make a play for this football team. Bazinet under pressure and sacked back at the three-yard line. So Purdue's defense rising to the challenge. Villarreal making the stop. That's the 20th sack of the season for Purdue. Mark and Purdue lining up. And they're locking on right here, playing man-to-man -man coverage. Nowhere to throw this football. It's man-free. That's a coverage sack right there. And how about Brock Spack in this Purdue defense? Uh, seven players to the NFL draft. And coming into this game, they were number 14 overall in total defense. Peterson into punt with the wind at his back gets off a high spiral. Well, he's come to life. Now. He's come back after a 12 and a 10 yard punt at effort back to back. This one going all the way down to the 36. Peterson boots that one 50 yards. And if you're Northwestern's defense, don't give in right now because your offense seems to be incapable of moving the football mark. Keep playing at a high level. Get the ball back one more time for your offense. So if you're on defense right now, keep playing at a high level for Northwestern. Let's go downstairs to Holly. Well, guys, Purdue's defense continues to be impressive today. One of the reasons, the attitude that those seven players that went to the NFL from defense last year left with these young players. Keep in mind, there's just one senior on this starting lineup. But the work ethic beginning in the weight room, how they played on the field has trickled down to these young players. Plus, they saw the success these guys have going to the NFL. And guys, it has trickled down to produce defense. They're keeping the tradition alive. Yeah, good point, Holly. Brandon Jones on the carry, and that, that speaks to the talent here at Purdue. And George Hall, a great example of the trickle-down effect that Holly spoke about. He played behind Nico Kudovides last year, and both of them from Connecticut. Uh, Hall says that he owes a lot to the things and some of the nuances that Kudovides taught him. And Hall this year winning the Hammer Award as well as the Pit Bull Award in spring football and early part of training camp. Meanwhile, it's the offense's turn on the field, second down and nine. Mark, keep in mind, the last two weeks, Purdue has had devastating turnovers late in the football game against Wisconsin and Michigan. So if you're Purdue, control the ball. Don't give it up like you've done the last two weeks. This is Brandon Jones out to the 40-yard line. The challenge, Reese Davis, is closing it out. Back Brent Schaefer will be at Tennessee next year. I'm going to say he'll hang in maybe one more year. After two years of watching, as talented as he is, you think quarterback draw? I'm going to go on to another issue. You think quarterback draw again for Purdue? Keep the clock moving. I think they're expecting it this time, and he's going to pass instead. 
Kirsch almost caught and then almost intercepted. Charles Davis almost had himself a tip pass. Let's get the review. Well, we're going to review this one, aren't we? Mark, I think this one will be reviewable. Charles Davis with the completion. They ruled it a catch. You get a chance to see it again. Tipped by Ingram. He Tremendous concentration by Davis. And the only question, did he have possession of it long enough, Mark? Because clearly the ball did not hit the ground. He's down there. That's a catch. That's a first down. Great job right there. Charles Davis with a circus grab off the hands of Ingram. The fans can boo all they want. Mark. That's a legal completion. The other angle, if we can go back and just look at it one more time, the ball did not hit the ground. The only question I have, did he have possession long enough? I think he did. And then the minute he's sitting on the ground with the ball in his lap, exactly. he's down. Here we go right here. There's a great angle. The ball clearly does not hit the ground. That's a catch. That's a catch. First down. Great job. Great job. And Mark, let me say this about the instant replay in the Big Ten. Randy Walker there in the foreground watching. Mark, he caught that ball. But the average time to review, I'm going to give you a stat right now that Dave Perry, the head of the officials, officials game of this week, the NFL takes 3 minutes and 21 seconds to review plays. The Big Ten this season, average time per, for review, 2 minutes and 46 seconds. And our technical advisor today is Verl Sell up in the booth. And he got it right like and, he usually does. I'll tell you what, Verl didn't hesitate. They were under 2 minutes and 46 seconds that time. Take all the time in the world if they get it right. And I'll tell you what. The Erasmus James incident is behind Charles Davis. He's made some plays today, Mark. Davis, Bob, with six catches for a total of 74 yards. That's a career high for the tall, strapping tight end. And he has made not only six catches, but several of them key conversions like that one. And let me give you one more. We've had, going into this week, 37 games, Mark, that instant play replay was used in the Big Ten. There's only been 14 reverse calls in 37 games coming in today. So these guys do a remarkable job. First down and 10, Brandon Jones hammering away, stopped up after a gain of about one. Nick Roach, sore shoulder and all, making the stop. Roach shaken up last week against Wisconsin, suffered a mild concussion. Yesterday a practice came back and Randy Walker's team calling a timeout with 2.38 to go in the fourth quarter. Northwestern trying to keep their home winning streak alive. Purdue trying to snap their two-game losing streak. It's day three of 19 days of consecutive football on ESPN, ESPN2, and ABC. And Kyle Orton watching this one from the sidelines. The offense now being directed by his understudy, Brandon Kirsch. Brett Bazine, meanwhile, has struggled today, far below his usual performance. 2.38 to go. It's first down, pardon me, second down and nine. Protect the football if you're Purdue. Kirsch, flag down, Kirsch down to the 43. Purdue, in the last couple of weeks, in losses to Wisconsin and Michigan, have had big turnovers, pivotal turnovers late in the game, which ultimately cost them potential wins. Let's go back to Reese Davis. All right, Mark, coming up from the College Game Day scoreboard presented by Acura, Trev and Mark will be with me. We know now why they call it Bedlam if we didn't before. Number 12, Tennessee, number 13, West Virginia having some trouble on the road. We'll get you up to date on everything going on in the Big Ten. And I'll tell you what, Bob Davey, Adrian Peterson is the best running back I've seen since Ray Rooster Jones. <laughs> we'll have to look at the Big 12 North. Somebody's going to win it. It could be the children of the corn. The children of the corn hey, all hey. of a sudden have found some offense, sort of. We'll talk about it in a bit. You guys got to go to you got to go to football101.com. Take a closer look at Adrian Peterson running out of that eye formation. Mark Mason? Wow. ESPN.com <laughs> for football 101. Second down and 18. 
to get down to the 38 yard line for the first down. Brandon Jones with both arms securely wrapped around that football out to the 46 yard line. We talked about Purdue's recent shortcomings late in the last two games they've played. They are two plays away from being 7-0. Exactly, Mark, and they have to put the deal away. Here we see Kyle Smith drop the interception. Here we see Kyle Orton has the ball stripped, picked up by Scott Starks. Ben Jones misses the field goal. I know Purdue fans are sick of watching these. Last week against Michigan, just a great effort right here by Ernest Shazer knocking this football loose. And now the story, can they close the deal right now on a, on a Northwestern team that's been unable, Mark, to generate any kind of offense? So if they protect the football, and even if they have to punt the football, give their defense a chance to close the deal for them. You wonder what kind of adjustments Joe Tiller and his team are going to make beyond this game, projecting forward a little bit. A win today, they become bowl eligible with their sixth win, but you get the sense that, Bob, this team is a little bit psychologically fragile, and in a sense, they've been defrocked. They've been exposed a little bit, like you said. Mark, I think they've been exposed the last four weeks. If you put the Penn State game in there, they have really struggled offensively. But still, five and two, looking for win number six. Third down and long. Going into the wind, Brandon Kirsch at quarterback. And you're going to get the three-man rush right here, Mark. Quarterback draw. He runs it down to the 48-yard line. Way short of the first down, and in comes the punting unit for Joe Tiller's crew. But McGargle making the stop for Northwestern with under two minutes to go now in the game. Northwestern with just one timeout remaining. And right now, if you're Northwestern, as anemic, and that's probably being kind to call their offense anemic so far in this football game, Mark. You have to think about blocking this punt. And particularly with the field goal problems that Northwestern has had with Brian Huffman this year, they need, in my opinion, to get some field position to have a chance. Northwestern, though, in very familiar territory. They've already played three overtime games. Did I just say overtime? Three overtime games this year. Well, tomorrow night, Tim Rattay, San Francisco, travel to Soldier Field just about 12 miles from here to take on the Chicago Bears. Mark and Purdue does something interesting with their punting. You'll see him sprint to the line right here and snap the ball. Levin to punt. Line driver. Takes a Purdue bounce and a fumble. Northwestern able to recover. That's Fillmore down at the 16-yard line. 84 yards away, but all they really have to do is get into field goal range. They do have the wind at their back on this game-closing drive. Mark, keep in mind, against Wisconsin, Wisconsin was able to take the ball about 80 yards against this Purdue defense. Purdue played a lot of deep zone drop got a little bit soft and Wisconsin executed and took the ball down the field. I don't look for Brock's back to do that. In fact, he's playing man free coverage right now. He's going to contest these receivers. That's a complete to Fillmore on the out pattern right near the first down marker at the 27 yard line. Mark Fillmore, the 5'10 junior, one of his few catches today. First down and 10. They gave him the first down. And keep in mind, Fillmore last week against the talented Brett Bell from Wisconsin beat him for a 35-yard touchdown pass against man-to-man -man coverage. So he's an excellent receiver. Fields is also a, a fast receiver, number one. Fumble on the snap by Bazinese, and he's forced to take off and do something on his own. Boy, that's a pernicious error that time. Northwestern with just one timeout remaining, Purdue with three. Pardon me, they have no timeouts remaining. Purdue Mark again stays in man coverage. Pass complete to Herbert. And Herbert into Purdue territory at the 43. Tackled by Rodgers. 
Mark Herbert beat the safety. Pollard, number 31, in man-to-man -man coverage. Again, right here, they're going to get that matchup. I'm a little curious that Brock's back doesn't substitute and get another corner in that game. Patted down at the line of scrimmage that time. It'll be second down and 10. The clock stops on the incompletion. George Hall was there to bat it down. Mark, I want to show you what I'm talking about. Pollard is really a linebacker playing DB, and right here he's going to be man-to-man -man with Kyle Smith as the free. That's not a great matchup for Purdue. And right there, Herbert beats Pollard inside. He's an excellent football player, but he is a linebacker hitter type. I'm surprised Broxback doesn't substitute right here and go to a nickel package. In fact, he just did. He has an extra defensive back in the game, Mark. Bazinet back to pass. They try to light him up. Complete to Fillmore down to the 33-yard line. Right near the first down marker with 1.06 to go. And we have a player shaken up down on the field. It appears to be Fillmore who just made the catch. They are entering field goal range. Remember, they do have the wind at their backs on this final drive. But also remember, Mark, that's the good news. <laughs> the bad news, Brian Huffman is 7 for 16 on the season. Missed a 32-yarder right in the middle of the field his last time out against Wisconsin. So he is struggling. His career long is just 41 yards. Got twisted up, it looks like, Bob, underneath the two tacklers, one of them, Antoine Rogers. More look at Mark Fillmore. Mark, you did. He dragged that leg as he got twisted. Team's leading receiver down on the turf right now amongst NCAA leaders in receptions per game. A kid that's come a long way since childhood when his mother, Vivian, didn't want him to play football when he was about eight years old, but his departed and late father, Mark Sr., pleaded on his behalf and finally talked mom into it. Nice to see Mark up and walking off the field under his own power. It is, Mark, and he hurt that knee last year in the Wisconsin game and did not come back the rest of the season. So that's good news that he was able to walk off the field. First down and 10. Northwestern driving. Maybe thinking beyond field goal right now. This is Heron. Heron down to the 21-yard line. And another first down for the Wildcats with under a minute to go. They are out of timeouts. And it really reminds you of the Wisconsin drive when John Stocko took Wisconsin down the field, Mark. 80 yards. Late net. Bazinet going up top. Incomplete and a flag. Antoine Rogers was there on the coverage. Kim Thompson, the intended receiver. Mark, the first thing, let's see if this ball is a catchable ball. I think you'd have to say that ball would be potentially caught. Now let's go ahead and look. No question right there, Mark. In my opinion, Antoine Rogers locked into him and pinned him to the sideline, which is a good technique, but I think a little bit too much contact right there. I agree with that call. The and irony, Bob, sorry, the irony, Bob, of all that is that Joe Tiller has had a lot to say to the Big Ten officials, actually sending in a tape this week of some of the contact against his Mark, receivers. that is a great, great point. And also right now, if I'm Randy Walker, I'm thinking touchdown. I do not want Brian Huffman kicking a field goal unless he has to right here to tie this football game. First down and goal to go. 50 seconds remaining in the ball game. Bazney working out of the shotgun. Purdue coming on a blitz. And it's tipped at the line of scrimmage by Ray Edwards. And the flag down on the near side of the field. Purdue may have jumped offside, gotten there a little bit early. And if you're Joe Tiller, can you close the deal? For the third consecutive week, his team clinging tenuously to a lead. Mark, and it's ironic how things go in cycles very similar to the Wisconsin game. I mean, Wisconsin could not gain a yard, and all of a sudden, Stocko took them down the field. In this football game today, Northwestern had punted 11 times and was able here late in this game to take it down the field. But can Purdue get over the hump and close the door? Here's Bazinet on first and goal. 
into the end zone, incomplete. No flag on the play, broken up by Pollard. It's second down and goal. The clock stops with 42 seconds to go. The Wildcats, no more timeouts remaining. And give Pollard credit, Mark. He comes back right here, does a great job of not getting his left, his right hand, excuse me, on the back for a potential pass interference. Do you give the ball to Noah Heron right here, Mark? Second down and goal. On the pitch to Heron. Touchdown, Wildcats. The cardiac cats strike again. Unbelievable. Mark, they had no pulse. No pulse on offense. For 58 and a half minutes, the offense lie dormant, lifeless, anemic, with nothing, and then finally coming alive, driving the ball down the field some 86 yards. And they ran the option on fourth and one against Indiana in overtime. They ran an option for a touchdown. Great call right there by Mike Dunbar. Huffman missing the extra point. So a field goal ties it for Purdue. And Mark, will we see Kyle Orton right now? Will 18 be in the game for Purdue? I'm betting he will. Northwestern has been here several times already this year. Playing so many games right down to the final second. Not the type of situation conducive to a coach recovering from a heart situation and condition. Mark, let's look at the touchdown. Again, Purdue in man coverage. They have somebody on the quarterback, but nobody on the pitch. Excellent call, Mark. Noah Heron with his 10th rushing touchdown this season, the 22nd of his career, and the biggest this season for Northwestern. Then the extra point. Boy, the nightmare continues with the kicking game for Huffman. And Mark, they have to kick this ball off. Obviously, field position, an issue, 38 seconds left, three timeouts for Purdue. Who will be the quarterback for Purdue? I think it has to be Kyle Orton. Want to come back and contend for the Heisman again, Kyle? Take him down the field right here with 38 seconds left. Got to get on the field first, see if he gets that chance. The kickoff down to the goal line, Jerome Brooks. Brooks is brought down short of the 20 at the 18-yard line. Let's see who comes onto the field for Purdue at quarterback. Will it be Kirsch? Will it be Orton? It has to be Kyle Orton, doesn't it? Uh, here comes Kirsch, it looks like. With 33 seconds to go, it is his ball game to win or lose. Three timeouts remaining for the Boilermakers. Ben Jones with a very strong leg, but in a big disclaimer, kicking into the wind if they get close enough. First and ten. You have to think maybe Stubblefield or Bryant, who's made several big plays, along with Davis. First with problems on the snap. Incomplete. Almost caught on the second attempt by Ingram. It was intended for Stubblefield. 26 seconds to go. Meanwhile, Mark Fillmore being carted off. Mark, this is shocking to me right here. I understand... Brandon Kirsch in the football game, when you have the lead and the ability to run a little bit more with Brandon Kirsch and send a message, but unless he's hurt, I am really surprised that Kyle Orton, a four-year starter, potential Heisman Trophy winner two weeks ago, is not in this football game. Second down and 10 for Kirsch. Looking downfield. Incomplete at the 25. It'll be third down and 10. There's a flag on the play intended for Brian here. Mark, we're going to get a pass interference right here. I do want to let you know that with respect to Kyle Orton, no injury has been reported to him. Randy Walker promising his physician that he would keep his cool with a bout of myocarditis. A swelling in the heart muscle. That was part of the condition for his return to the sidelines. That's interference on the defense. It'll be first down and 10 for Purdue. And Mark, you have to think about Kyle Ingram, six foot nine, up at the top right here. At some point, they have to get this football down the field. 
21 seconds. Just launch the ball and let a six foot nine receiver mark make a play right here. First to pass, and they're going to blow it dead. Have a flag down on the field. Purdue does have three timeouts remaining. It's going to be an offsides against Purdue. Kyle Orton watching from the sidelines. He was pulled earlier in the second half in favor of Brandon Kirsch, the sophomore. And Joe Tiller going to burn one of his remaining timeouts. We have two remaining. Mark, can you talk about it at crossroads? Purdue right now, three weeks ago, a 5-0 and team. Now a chance of being a 5-3 and football team with their quarterback potentially in the tank over here. This is at the crossroads right now How for quickly. a Purdue team with high, high expectations. Two weeks ago, they were ranked number five in the country amongst the contenders for the national title. Then a devastating loss against Wisconsin at home. And then another loss at home against Michigan. This was a bit of a trap game coming in for Purdue. A big challenge to get up for Northwestern. A team perceived, I say in quotations, to be not their same caliber or quality. And the atmosphere, Mark, so conducive for an upset coming in here after playing in front of capacity stadiums. Yep. Randy Walker. The last four weeks. Randy Walker, 0 and 5 lifetime against Purdue. Randy Walker told us a couple of weeks ago, hey, nobody talks about us. Everybody talks about Purdue. That's six, Michigan. That's six foot nine, Mark. Excuse me. Get the ball up in the air to Kyle Ingram. On first and 15, he looks the other way downfield for Hare, and it's incomplete. Into double coverage. It'll be second down and 15. Purdue for the third consecutive week has uh, seen their fortunes go south late in the ball game, late in the fourth quarter. There's Ingram, a big target at 6'9". But how do you get him the ball at this juncture? 17 seconds to go. Purdue with two timeouts remaining. Looking to get into field goal range for Ben Jones. That's Dorian Bryant, the speedy wideout. Will he be the choice receiver here? Kirsch complete at midfield. Down to the 41-yard line. It was Ingram. They stop the clock. Purdue with timeouts probably will just go ahead and use a timeout, although they can just spike the ball, but they they go ahead and use their second timeout. A 31-yard pickup. And again, England. I'm a little bit surprised right here, Mark, that Northwestern is in too deep coverage and allows Ingraham up that seam. There's a look at Ben Jones. A couple of weeks ago against Wisconsin, he missed a potential game-tying field goal from 42 yards out. His career long is 50 yards. He's made it twice. And Kyle Orton watching from the sidelines. Once again, want to reiterate to you that we have been not been notified of any injury to Kyle Orton. Orton was benched earlier in the third quarter. It has been Brandon Kirsch's team since that point. Ball resting at the 41 yard line for the Boilermakers. A pivotal point in their season right now. Again, Ingram against two deep. Again, Mark, now they drop out the three deep coverage. They need a good chunk on this play. Kirsch Got has it. a man. Oh. Incomplete at the 21 yard line to Stubblefield. And he's not protesting that one either. Mark. He has to make that play. They have a potential game-tying field goal right there. And give Brandon Kirsch credit. Two back-to-back -back excellent throws. Here they play three deep. They go to the out route in front of the sideline. Mark, He's he has to catch that football. The all-time leading reception leader in the Big Ten. Couldn't ask for a better throw from his Can't quarterback. Can't be thrown any better, Mark. And now they they're do. down to one play, a Hail Mary. They use their final timeout. And it will literally take a miracle for them to score here. 
If they catch that pass, Ben Jones comes in and they have a legitimate shot at tying on a field goal. And as many good things as Kyle Orton and Taylor Stubblefield have done, the bottom line, those two big-time, big-time players, Mark, have not stepped up in the last three weeks of this season for Purdue. Stubblefield coming into this game only had four catches in the last two previous ones. That's Ben Jones, who now will not get a chance to kick the potential game-tying field goal. And the obvious target here is Kyle Ingram at 6'9". Going to call maybe a little Big Ben left. Ingram lining up to the top of your screen. Wildcats in their prevent defense. Got to let it fly into the end zone. There's someone there. Incomplete, almost caught, but incomplete. Stubblefield was there. And Northwestern has its first win in six tries against Joe Tiller and Purdue. Kyle Orton forced to watch the final moments from the sidelines. And on homecoming weekend, the Wildcats drive the ball down the field in the dying minutes of the game to win it. Boy, Bob, this one looked close. Mark, this looked really no. close. Let's go downstairs to Holly Rowe. Holly? Coach, what a day for you to have cardiac cats again. What were you thinking during that last drive? I was thinking that. I told these guys not to do this to me, you know, but, uh, you know, I just, I'm awful pleased with our kids. I thought we played with some poise. Didn't go well. We talked about it before the game. This is going to be an ebb and flow game. We found out we found out we could make the play at the end. Your offense hasn't been able to move the ball down the field like that all game. What was different on that last drive? I tell you what, if I had the answer to that, we wouldn't be in this position now. But, you know, obviously we struggled. The, the elements are a condition on a day like today. And, and, and so it made it difficult for both teams. And we just were able to make a couple key plays. All right. Thanks very much, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Bye-bye. Mark, on this last play, first of all, you have to give Brandon Kirsch credit for staying alive, buying enough time to throw it. Second, throwing into the wind. He throws this ball about 50 yards, and right here... Boy, stubble. Wow. That is a great job by Dominic Price coming in and stripping that football. Nick Roach also there, Nick number Nick Roach and Dominic Price, Mark. Randy Walker, meanwhile, battling a heart condition, undergoing a little bit of cardio strain. His team with their fourth win of the year, 13-10 victors. Right now, game day scoreboard presented by Acura. Reese, that is a heart stopper, literally.